So we had some controversy pop up over the weekend about Ellen DeGeneres, who is a uh, now openly lesbian comedian. Uh, she's like a superstar. She's got a, a daytime television show. My mother loves her. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I remember watching Ellen with my mom. I used to watch Ellen with my mom, especially over the summers. Uh, we, we used to sit down and watch that show together. I always found it entertaining and, you know, like a little daytime television show. She'd do a little dance. My mom would get excited about it. That was always nice. Um, you know, like to see my mom get excited about something related to comedy was always fun. Uh, so over the course of the weekend, there was a picture that went viral of her sitting next to George W. Bush at a Dallas Cowboys game. And it looked like, um, it looked like she was palling around, you know, having a good fucking time. Uh, with George W. Bush, uh, who, if you're in the progressive circle, uh, is known to have been part of an administration that, uh, entered America into a, uh, illegal war, which is kind of still happening. Right? So, <laughs> it's, it's like, like, George Bush fucking started it, Obama carried it through, everybody was like, ah, it's different because Obama's doing it. It's like, is it? Is it? Cool. Um, so, you know, everybody's complaint was basically just like, how could you, well, the first one was, how could you sit next to somebody uh, who ran a national campaign to make sure that you don't have the right to exist? And that's a very fair question to ask. Right, super fair question to ask. Very confusing. Is she an ally? Um, is she still on the uh, on the righteous side? You know, because she has championed for gay rights. She's very vocal about her marriage to Portia de Rossi uh, of Arrested Development fame, uh, and uh, Better Off Ted, which is I think an underrated television show that never really made it past I think one or two seasons. Uh, but she's fantastic in that show as well, and. Uh, and, and, yeah, I get the complaint. I 100% get the complaint. It's very confusing. It's super fucking confusing. Why would you pal around? So, um, maybe a day or two ago, I want to say about two days ago, there was a, uh, video response. On Tuesday, she did a video response, right? Um basically coming out and telling the story of everything that happened and if you didn't happen to catch it the recap to it is uh the daughter of the owner of the cowboys uh something jones because there was a joke where she was trying to keep up with the joneses uh and in in standard ellen fashion it was kind of a meandery story that had these little details that really fucking didn't need to be in there um, and then it ends with this overarching point. So, uh, basically what she says is she ends up getting these box seats. And it's like this who's who that's in the box seats, right? Like, she did not choose to sit where she sat. She sat there because those were the box seats that were given to her by, uh, the daughter of the owner of the Cowboys. Uh, something Jones, right? Daughter Jones, let's call her. Daughter Jones... Um, uh, who, you know, unlike Mother Jones, I, I feel like Mother Jones was a badass, Daughter Jones just a fucking plutocrat, right? Like, that's like, a, what a weird shift to happen there, right? Like, Mother Jones fighting for the working class, Daughter Jones has, owns a fucking football team, uh, that I'm probably gonna have to say is a bunch of, but has a bunch of black players in it. And she's just like, huh, we own black people. Kind of. We just pay them a big salary, but they have to do what we sell them to. Like, it's weird. What a weird generational difference that happened there. Uh, anyway, Daughter Jones gets to these seats. She sits in these seats, right? And she's kind of, like, stunned. Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres is stunned at, like, who's there. So she does a little video, and I think this is... And, and part of this thing is, like, this video is kind of what caught the attention of some people. And, um, and in this video, she is like, holy shit, look at all this crazy stuff. And, oh, there's Portia talking to Daughter Jones. And then on the other side, it's, oh, it's, it's former President George W. Bush. 
And he's like, oh, you know, he's doing a like, cute little face. Oh man, let's let's hide. Let's just dampen down all of the emotions that I have of knowing that I've murdered so many Iraqis and I sent a whole bunch of people uh, into an illegal war for oil. But I'm gonna I'm gonna just stuff all of that down and do a goofy face into the camera. Oh, oh, oh. oh man! Oh, he's just like us. He's just except he's just like us in almost every way in that I think most American citizens haven't started an illegal war. I can't stress that enough. It was part of an administration that started an illegal war that is still going on today. Uh, 19 fucking years. It's not stopped. Uh, and essentially changed the framework of American politics, changed our view on immigration, changed our view on national security, changed our view on the military-industrial complex, the amount of budget that we spend to it, and the fact that we can't really afford a health care system or a real public education because we're overfunding the military and the Pentagon, which need to uh, uh, fund into this uh, national security cause that we think we have to do because we're fighting these terrorists. But these terrorists are just a result of our own history of creating these terrorists over and over again by going into areas that we don't really need to be into to try to secure this national security interest and, and and giving these people weapons and training them and telling them that this invisible boogeyman is here and you guys are going to fight for the good guys and then disappear and be like, well, you guys are fucking worthless now and they feel these, these this void, this void in there. Uh, and all of that is ignored by, whoa, goofy face. So that happens. And at the end of this fucking monologue that Ellen gives she goes really you know uh, we have to get past our political differences what we need to do is be kind not just to people in our own camp but be kind to everybody and I completely 100% agree with that message right like I'm for that message I like that message right I like the message of be kind to everybody because that's what I do in my life uh, I don't I think some people have this notion that, um, you know, you have to kind of be guarded and, tr uh, and like, not trust people because they're all out to get you kind of thing. And until they prove that they're not out to get you, that's when you can mildly open up and give them until you're ready to fucking strike. It's this weird kind of way of, of looking at life. Uh, I, I don't, I never cared for it. Even when I was, like, I never fucking cared for it, right? Like, like people have taught me that view and told me that's the view that we, we need to espouse to and... I've never particularly thought that that view has any sort of a value behind it. But um, the way that I like to look at things is uh, in the lens that um, until you give me a reason not to trust you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you and I'm going to treat you with kindness and respect and uh, understanding and compassion and empathy and learn your story and learn where you're from. And, uh, give you patience, right? I, I'm gonna do. I, I, why not? I, I feel like that's what I would want in return from people. So I'm going to. I'm going to do, give that um, to my fellow man, um, and uh, and I think that's important. Now, I do wish that George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld had just maybe a, a micro ounce of kindness to not start an illegal war, to enrich themselves by invading a country that had nothing to do with the attacks uh, that were funded by our ally. Uh, I wish they kind of had a little bit of kindness to do that. I wish they had the kindness to not send um, men and women in this country and non-binary folks into into a armed conflict where they would lose their lives. Uh, and what they're fighting for is not the idea of freedom, liberty, and all the things that are stated in the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, and Bill of Rights, but to enrich the bottom line of the oil industry, the war profiteers, um, and however, which arguably is both. Boy, I wish they had some kindness for that. So Ellen making this message is like, well, it's difficult because the people that you are asking us to give kindness to, um, 
have always never given kindness to anybody else but their, but but themselves and their own and people that they think can enrich them even more. So it's difficult for us to do that. And I get it. I don't know if, if I'm the type of person that's like, get George W. Bush out of this goddamn society. No, I, but, you know, my wife and I were talking about what would we do in, those, in that box seat. And, um, you know, this goes into something that I, I, I will talk about a, a lot more in, this, in the next part about this. Is, look, first of all, I, I'm not in that rich kid club. Right, I'm not in the Hollywood elite club. I'm not making millions and billions of dollars on a television show. Uh, I make tens of hundreds of dollars on stand-up comedy shows uh, that other comedians have said is stand-up comedy uh, because I talk about issues and do the sort of shit. So, I, but hypothetically, let's say I am in that rich kid club, right? Uh, and I get invited, and then I find out George W. Bush is sitting next to me. I would start with the pleasantries, right? Hey, how's it going? How are you? Uh, and then kind of start prodding and poking. How? What are you doing with your time? Uh, do you think that you'll ever get tried for the war crimes you committed? Uh, how do you feel about the Iraqis that were murdered? Uh, what about the veterans that you probably didn't help? Uh, why did you say mission accomplished and we're still in this fucking war 19 years later? What did mission accomplished mean to you? Did you just see that your bottom line was definitely going to grow? Uh, don't you also own the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, and uh, are, do the Dallas Cowboys have as much blood on their hands as you do on yours? At this point, I'm probably going to be kicked out. I'm like done, right? I'm going to be fucking out of the game and I'm going to be like, well... Fuck it, I don't even understand what this game is. It's all American gladiators here. And it's no different than sending a bunch of people to war and die for a cause because all these people end up with uh, uh, major brain diseases that no one cares about anyway for the sake of entertainment and enriching a bunch of other white people. And then, I mean, like, I, at that point, I'm probably going to get arrested. At that point, I'm probably going to get arrested. <laughs> now, the photo that... Uh, that was in question, I think, uh, is a little innocuous. Did she pal around? Yeah, she palled around with him. I mean, you could fucking see that in the video that she showed. She kind of incriminated herself a little bit. Um, and, uh, and in the photo, initially, when I looked at it, I was like, all right, it kind of just fucking seems like they're sitting next to each other. And she's on her phone and something happened. And, and George W. Bush always kind of has like, I think, I'm thinking about boobs. Kind of like, you know, like that look on his face. And he's like laughing because he's, oh, I'm thinking about the boobs. Should I paint some boobs? Maybe I can paint some boobs. They'll put it in a high school gymnasium or something. That'd be funny. You know, like I think he's got that thing going around in his head. That's what it initially looked like. But then when she kind of showed the video, it was like, yeah, you're fucking palling around, you know? You're bros. It's hard to it's hard to have kindness for people that didn't have like Obama needs to have some kindness for the for people that he like drone bombed the shit out of. Like that wedding that he blew up. It's just a carryover from from the Bush days. Now a lot of people got upset. At Ellen making this message. And look, I still wholeheartedly believe in that message, right? We should have kindness for everybody, including people that um, that we disagree with. You know, I have I have plenty of people in my life that I disagree with. Uh, and, and I don't I don't start the conversation with, well, you can go right ahead and fuck yourself. Well, I, we're not getting anywhere. You know, if you notice, even when I, even in that hypothetical scenario where I would be talking to George Shelby Bush. Question three was, do you think you would get tried for war crimes? You know, I gave it a little bit of a buffer, right? Like, let's, let's, you know, talk to these people a little bit. Uh, and then realize, and well, I think what we would mostly realize with people like George Bush is uh, they don't give a fuck about us. So, really, the, the, this is like a call for civility. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm for, I'm for this idea of civility. I'm for this idea 
uh, that we need to have uh, civil disobedience in a nonviolent way. Uh, we need to show people that are uh, on the op uh, on the on the opposition, people on the ground level on the opposition, that they don't have anything to be afraid of uh, from the minority community and and minority communities getting certain rights, getting these equal rights, does not mean that those rights no longer exist for them. Oil is a, is a finite resource, equality is not. Um, but we are conditioned to think that equality is, right? Like if gay people start getting married, will my marriage be taken away? No, you still get to have your horrific, horrific marriage. Your horrible marriage that should have ended 10 years ago, yeah, fucking you get to still keep it. <laughs> but, you know, equality is not a finite resource. Um, so really the question is, should Ellen DeGeneres be the mascot for civility? Ellen DeGeneres, a rich tele daytime television host that lives in a, 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 a presumably in a mansion. Uh, uh, does she, is she the appropriate mascot or figurehead for the call for civility? The simple answer that I have is no. <laughs> I don't think Ellen DeGeneres should be the, the mascot for, um, for civility, right? Because at the end of the day, what difference does it make that Ellen DeGeneres was civil to George W. Bush, not Dick All, right? Like George, just because they palled around doesn't mean that George W. Bush somehow found some humanity and was like, I think my entire administration needs to be tried for war crimes. I think what we did uh, in Iraq and and, uh, and Afghanistan uh, and Libya and all those other countries is totally illegal. And I urge other politicians to do the same and take accountability for what you did. That didn't fucking happen. All they did was show that liberal and conservatives, regardless uh, of how rich they are, they get to fucking hang out. Because even though they have political differences, even though one side fought to uh, make sure that the other side doesn't exist anymore, uh, they still get to be rich. They don't have to worry about uh, how are they going to get to their two jobs. How are they going to have enough money to pay rent, bill, and foods? How are they going to, uh, you know, can they afford to get sick? They don't have to worry about any of that. Civility amongst rich people is, it doesn't even fucking matter. And we shouldn't be putting it on the celebrity. We shouldn't have the celebrity be the, the fucking figurehead of civility and peace and kindness. These people should not be the mascots for that. I would go so far as to say that I don't think we need to have fucking mascots for it. I think we need to have um, people just doing it. On the ground floor. On the ground level. We need to have people like us. Um, working class people. We need to have civility towards each other. Right? Civility with amongst rich people is, is virtually meaningless. Civility toward w within us, within the, the working class, is everything. That's what they're afraid of the most. That's, that's what the elites are afraid of the most, right? That's what people like George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, Rumsfeld, Obama, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, Donald Trump, even to some degree Ellen DeGeneres is afraid of is us coming together is us looking past our own differences and coming together under one cause and that cause is the infinite resource of equality why does Ellen DeGeneres get to have a bajillion dollars why does George W. Bush get to enrich himself with war after war own, and then owning the fucking cowboys after that and doing his little paintings and it's totally fucking fine. They've enriched themselves on the back of the middle class. 
us coming together and realizing, well, that doesn't seem right. And doing something about it. And treating each other better. And, and basically realizing that if, if these elites are not going to do what they promised, uh, promised to do, which is um, to basically take care of the, of the working class and the lower class, if they're not going to do that sort of stuff, then it's up to us. We got to start taking care of each other. It's what it boils down to. So at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of rich people shit. This big issue that we have. It's a bunch of rich people shit. I, okay. Let's start treating each other a little bit better. You have someone that, that uh, has a different opinion than you on Medicare for All? Okay. Hear them out. And they can hear you out. And regardless of what happens, you can go, well, you know, I respect and see where you're coming from. I come from a different place, and, uh, and I really do believe that what I have to say is wholeheartedly, the best thing for a lot of people in this country. Um, and I know that you're worried that it might not be and that your idea is going to be the best. I guess, I mean, we're going to have to see where it goes. Rather than saying, well, I'm not going to talk to this person because they don't believe everything that I believe in. Ellen DeGeneres and George W. Bush can do that. Because to them, there's almost nothing riding on the line. They still get to be rich. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian, and uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.